Hello, guys. Hello. Here for another live webinar session with Damien from forexbot.com. Uh, I am so happy to see you all here. Hey, I see some people joining. There you go. Eight people already. I say hi to everyone. In the meantime, guys, I would like to encourage you uh, to use the, the question section simply to say hi, uh, to make sure uh, to, to share with me if you can hear me and see me, uh, because that's very important for the quality of the webinar, of course, to be able to hear me and see me. Uh, in the meantime, also feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, all right, Christian's here saying that uh, he can hear me and see me. Let's see if I can open this question section in a sec. Yeah, here it is. All right, so I see Jesus Ramirez here. He says hi. I say hi to you too. Christian uh, Jepsen or Jepsen says hi from uh, Denmark. He also says that he can hear me and see me, which is great. Jesus also says uh, that it looks good and the sound is good. So this can only make me happy, which means uh, it means that our setup is 100% uh, all set. And this webinar is likely to go smoothly. Oh, thank you. Like my chair. You want to see it in a better way? There you go. Yeah, my chair is nice. I love my chair. There you go. <laughs> That's a nice chair. Well, I stay a lot in that chair every day <laughs> since I'm uh, <laughs> I'm related to trading and to the Forex Ball Trading Academy. So I stay a lot in that chair. So I, I really make sure that I'm in a very, very comfortable chair. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. That is a nice chair. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Perfect. By the way, I saw a lot of people in our private trading group that mark themselves going to this webinar. So I plan on like tagging some of them now to this event. Uh, so let's do that. Yeah, totally. Let's do that. I'm going to tag some people so they will know that they will be able to join that event. All right. Just give me a second. Yeah, then we'll go quickly through the important economic events during the week, and then we will start this webinar. The thing is that I really want to wait like for a few more minutes until more people join to this live webinar session, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people also want to join. Other people want to join. So yeah, we're going to do that for sure. All right. Okay, so let's see who marked himself going. Uh, Renata Moravska. Uh, let's first write a message. Webinar on money management has just started. Join. Join me here. There you go. Now I'm going to leave the webinar link. And then I'm going to tag like few people who mark themselves going and they will know that we're already live because sometimes people, you know, they sign up for a webinar, they forgot about it and then they're sorry and they want to watch the replay. Not that we're not recording this webinar session, uh, but uh, just in case, because some people really want to uh, really want to watch uh, the webinar in real time. All right. Okay. All right, tagging some people to this live webinar session. All right, one more person joins. Feel free to introduce yourself and to share with me what's your name, where you're from. All right. Renata Moraska. Ratapon is also coming to the session. All right. Then we have Du Min, our dedicated member, Du Min.
Do you mean from Vietnam? By the way, I was in Vietnam like a, like a month ago. Awesome country. Awesome, awesome country. Elias also uh, Dennis Pleticha. By the way, I would like to apologize if I tag somebody who is already here, but I, I have no idea. So I'm simply tagging all the people that are themselves going. Johan as well. Johan. Kyriakos. And after Kyriakos, Marco. Marco, Marco with Oliveri, then Hatem, Darren, dedicated members. Hatem, Darren, Irwin, Anthony Barris, another dedicated member. Anthony Barris, a dedicated member and a friend. Uh, regular participants of our life analysis sessions and the webinars. Frank comes afterwards, uh, Hugh and Enrico. Fran. Sahu so and Enrico. Say so, Hugh and Enrico. Enrico Nani. There you go. All right. All right. I just tagged all the people. So let's see 11 people already and more people are about to come. So I expect that this will be like a busy, busy webinar session. And now I'm, I'm going to go real quick to the most important economic events uh, throughout the week. Uh, and then we'll be ready to start. So we'll be able to give like a minute or two to the other people to join. All right. So what did happen during the week? Oh, all right. The important event is coming after 51 minutes. And this is the United States crude oil inventories, of course, something that is likely to cause high volatility uh, to the American dollar. So uh, that will be a, a big thing. What else did we have? Building permits we had today from the United States for December, 1.302 million building permits or 1.290 million building permits uh, forecast, meaning that this is a better than expected event. All right, Chinese gross domestic product, that's huge. Uh, all right, Chinese gross domestic product was announced at 6.8%, better than expected, uh, because the forecast was for 6.7%. So they're growing even on a faster pace than expected. Well, isn't that like a big thing, 6.8%? Imagine that they're growing and they cannot stop. <laughs> They really cannot stop. So Australian unemployment, uh, actually Australian employment change for December. Oh, uh, wow. That's a that's a good event. Uh, thirty four point seven thousand. Yeah, thirty four point seven K on nine thousand nine K forecast, which means that the employment change in Australia for December was bigger, positively bigger uh, with uh, what's that? 25.7 thousand more a lot more a lot more than expected what else bank of canada announced interest rates at 1.25 percent as expected unchanged uh, what else did we have yeah the european union consumer price index year over year for december meaning that measured from december 2000 uh, and 16 to December 2017 at 1.4% or 1.4% forecast. Basically, these were like the more important economic events throughout the week. So now, guys, I suggest that we continue with our webinar, which is going to be on money management. So the first thing I'm going to do is to stop my camera. Oh, I see in the question section. 
Uh, James Brown says he's in Da Nang. Well, the interesting thing, James, is that one month ago I was in Vietnam, exactly in Da Nang. <laughs> exactly. Actually, uh, not exactly in Da Nang, but maybe like 20 kilometers away from Da Nang in Hoi An, in the resort part, in a hotel that, that's called Boutique Hoi An. Probably you know that hotel resort. It's like a very, very nice place. I loved it. I really loved it. I loved Da Nang. I loved Hoi An as well. Very, very nice places, really. All right, guys. So now I suggest that we continue with our webinar session. Uh, I am going to turn off my camera now. There you go. I'm disappearing. All right. Now I'm gone, and you're supposed to hear only my voice. And the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is uh, to switch to our disclaimer. Uh, and I would like to ask you to spend like uh, 30 seconds to a minute to go through this disclaimer so you will know that we are 100% regulated company uh, financially and legally uh, and also that everything uh, you're going to hear in this webinar session uh, responds to, to general advice and no personal advices are being uh, held or given over here. Uh, meaning that uh, we're not taking into consideration your personal financial situation. Everything stays into the general advice uh, practice, and we're simply uh, making general uh, discussions related to the financial markets, more particularly to the forex market. So I encourage you. I encourage you to quickly go through this uh, disclaimer uh, and uh, to read it real quick. So you will be sure and you will see that we're 100% regulated company. All right, then I'm going to switch to our webinar on money management. All right, all right, let's proceed with this. And here it is, money management and how to invest the smart way. Probably. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with uh, money management in forex trading. And at the same time, probably a lot of you went through the, uh, through the course that we, have, that we have on money management in our academy. However, the thing that I want to do with this webinar is simply to uh, introduce you to, like, introduce you to some like, uh, easy practices that will help you like uh, it, it will help you like calculate your outcomes outcomes in a better way when uh, trading with forex. So now let's go through the plan of the webinar. So uh, I plan on starting with what is trade management. Uh, I will go through some stop loss order uh, rules as well as some take profit order uh, rules. Then I'm going to switch to risk management. I'm going to introduce the 1% rule, which probably most of you are familiar with. Then I'm going to go through level, uh, leverage, amount to put in trade. Then we're going to do some calculations. So you will see how everything is like calculated step by step. Uh, also, we're going to go through some strategy rules, introducing the win-loss ratio as well as the success rate in Forex trading. Then we're going to sum up everything with... Uh, in the money management techniques and at the end i'm going to end up uh this webinar session with introducing the forex vault calculator which stays at our website and i'm going to show you how to use this awesome tool because if you use this tool you can simply like input all the metrics of your trading strategy uh and your risk management rules and it will calculate everything for you including uh including stop loss levels, take profit levels. It's going to do projections for your trades and so on and so forth. So this is why I believe this is a very useful webinar session because it is going to introduce a nice tool to you. All right, so let's start with trade management. So what is trade management, guys? Well, basically, the three, the three points that you're currently looking at, they pretty much mean the same thing, but it's set in a different way and it's uh, kind of a uh kind of a like leveling leveling up this concept so trade management is to like broadly said to control your trades if you want to be more specific you can say to be in charge of your trades but actually 
the the full meaning of trade management is to be fully aware of your potential outcomes when you're trading forex no matter how many trades you're you're holding the goal is to feel confident with your open trades with your open trade this is what trade management is about however how are we able to achieve this comfort when trading forex this is what i'm going to share with you now so there are two basic concepts related to trade management and two basic tools these are the stop loss order and the take profit order which i bet all of us know in forex trading right stop loss order is related to risk management because it defines the maximum amount you can lose from a trade while take profit order is related to your strategy because it is defined by your strategy and it defines the maximum amount you can profit from a particular trade and the thing actually is that you are in charge of how the forex trading game is played right because you are in charge of these levels if you know where to put your stop loss order and when you put where to put your take profit order this means that you are taking uh some aspects of your trades where you know what is the maximum amount you can lose and the maximum amount you can profit which means that you're absolutely aware of what can happen uh from your trades right and this brings us to the confidence and to be fully aware of your trades which i mentioned like a few minutes ago so now let's talk a bit about risk management there you go so three of the important things related to risk management is first bankroll second leverage and third buying power so the bankroll is the full amount you have deposit you've deposited in your trading account meaning the money that you decide to trade with your like full amount your bankroll the leverage is like a credit like credit you're taking you're borrowing from your broker in order to trade bigger amounts because if you're trading only with your bankroll it's not working right i mean uh say you have uh what do you have say you have ten thousand dollars you bet them all and the euro dollar moves with like uh what's that moves with uh 0.01 percent for one hour which means that you profit your profit equals to i'm currently like calculating it with my mind which means that your profit equals to how much is that like like one one dollar <laughs> yeah exactly with ten with ten thousand dollars your profit's gonna be like one dollar because one percent of ten thousand dollars equals to one hundred dollars zero point one percent is ten dollars zero point zero one percent is what's that one dollar and zero point zero one percent move is a totally normal move for like half an hour or for 15 minutes or so on and so forth this is why people use leverage to get like more money to trade with well, and at the same time they don't own this amount of course and this is where the buying power comes from the buying power represents your total bankroll multiplied by the leverage you're taking for example if you are trade if your bankroll is like two thousand dollars and your leverage is one to fifty uh this means that your buying power equals to two thousand dollars times fifty which pretty much is one hundred thousand dollars all right the thing is that the more you borrow from your broker meaning that the higher leverage you use the more you are risking because when you're like trading forex when you're trading like with more money when you're borrowing more money you can you can gain like you can profit faster and faster and faster however you should not forget that you always you are always uh exposing yourself to losing money with the same speed so the faster your potential to win the faster uh the faster you can lose that amount of money so the more you can gain the more you can lose that's the thing now i'm going to introduce you probably with uh, with the risk management rule that probably all of you all of you know uh which is the one percent risk management rule a lot of people say and you you're gonna find this in the thick books that uh you should not risk like more than one percent of your bankroll per trade and this sounds very simple right one percent very easy absolutely easy however this rule i would like to say 
that this rule is not always true because for example if you're a position trader where you are taking trades uh for like one year or more than one year this means that in your entire forex trading career you might stay like with i, I don't know 10 trades 20 trades or only few trades you never know if your trades stay here then you might be able of course to take higher risk because if you don't take higher risk it is very likely that uh, your trade gets closed by because the price hits your stop loss order and so on and so forth yeah but now let's get back to that one percent rule because we're going to use this as a basis of the calculation that we're going to make during this webinar so the one percent rule i said that it is not like fully applicable all the time because depending on your trading style you can take a little bit more risk or a little bit less risk however no matter how simple this sounds it brings a lot of questions and here they are four of the most like common questions when we're talking about risk management the first thing is how much of my bankroll is one percent second how much of the amount i invest is equal to one percent third where should i put my stop loss order and fourth how do i calculate all of this complicated stuff and now guys i encourage you to open your calculators and to pop them up because we're going to do some math and now you're going to see my calculator well oops that's my chart i apologize this is what happens when you use like multiple monitors so <laughs> sorry about that guys <laughs> i'm going back to where i was all right real quick all right now let's do some math I'm going to open my calculator. Take out, I have like a shortcut on my keyboard in order to open that calculator real quick. All right, great. That's my calculator. And you're probably seeing it now. All right, cool. And now let's go to our next slide about doing some math with you guys. All right, I'm going to move this calculator left and right so you'll be able to see everything. Or maybe I will simply minimize it and I'm going to bring it back whenever I need it. All right, that's the smarter thing to do, right? All right, let's say our bankroll equals to $5,000 that we decide to invest in Forex trading. We go to our broker, we deposit our 5,000 American dollars, and we decide to trade this 5,000 American dollars with a leverage of one to, to 100, meaning that our buying power is going to equal, notice that I go step by step through this slide, and I encourage you to read it all with me, so you will not lose the track of what I'm trying to say. So uh, having $5,000 in your bankroll and trading with one to 100 leverage gives you, gives you a total buying power of 5,000 times 100 the leverage equal to $500,000 buying power. And let's say that you are investing in, in each of your trades 25% of your buying power which is totally up to you notice what i've written in the bottom left corner how much you will invest in a single trade this strongly depends on your trading strategy and in you and since you're the one who is responsible for your trading strategy this is up to you the thing is that uh, controlling the amount you invest per trade gives you higher uh, like uh, gives you flexibility with your risk management approach and now you will see why is that so now let's switch to the right part of this slide take a look at point number one so you invest 125,000 in a single trade right because this is like 25 percent of your buying power of 500,000 american dollars and you're doing this with a bankroll of only five thousand dollars that's the thing what the leverage is doing so with these five thousand dollars you're trading as you being owning uh, a total amount of five hundred thousand dollars but you're putting like one hundred twenty five thousand dollars in each of your trades which means that you're going to gain you're going to profit with that speed but at the same time you're going to lose with that speed if the market goes against you so this is the trick be careful when you're losing this point number two now we will need to try not to lose more than one percent of our bankroll right because this is the one one percent rule However, notice that this 1% rule should be applied from your bankroll of $5,000. $5, 
don't make mistake to apply to the buying power of five hundred thousand dollars because at the end this is what you own five thousand american dollars so in order not to lose more than one percent uh not to lose or not to risk more than one percent per trade this means that you will need to find how much is one percent from five thousand dollars and this equals to fifty dollars and the fifty dollars is the maximum amount you can risk per trade if you want to comply to the one percent risk rule number three where should your stop loss go the thing here to complete this calculation is to calculate how many percent are fifty dollars from the amount you invest per trade because at the end this is our maximum risk capacity right 50 bucks out of this five thousand dollars however since we're investing in a single trade 125 thousand american dollars we will need to see how much 50 bucks takes out of this 125 thousand dollars we do this by dividing there you go I'm, I'm popping up my calculator we do this by dividing 50 on 125,000, and we'll receive a result of 0 0.0004. Notice that this is not a percentage, this is a number. You know, in order to convert that number to percentage, we need to multiply it by 100. There you go. This is what we're doing, and we're getting 0 0.04. So, what does this percentage mean? It means that since $50 takes 0.04% of $125,000. This means that our uh, stop loss order should be placed on a 0.04% distance from our entry point, which brings us to point number four. Your stop loss order should go at a 0.04% distance from your entry point. This is how the 1% rule is being calculated with $5,000. All right, let's do it with another amount. Let's say we're having, uh, uh, should I open a doc file? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can open a doc file so I can like add some more stuff. By the way, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I would love to answer at any time. So feel free to ask if you have any questions. All right, now you're seeing a doc file, right? So I'm going to do some calculations for you guys. Let's say that our bankroll equals this time to, what's that? A uh, smaller amount. Let's say $2,000, right? All right. Our bank is $2,000. We're losing small, we're using smaller leverage equals to one to 120. Let's say small leverage we're using. All right. Uh, what else? Buying power. What is our buying power? this is equals to 20 times 2000 equals to 40000 dollars buying power here it is this is our buying power all right what amount we would like to invest in single trade maybe since we don't have that much of a buying power we might want to invest like bigger amounts so let's say, uh, let's say, what is that? Like, uh, let's say 40%. How much is 40% of 40,000? I'm going to tell you right now. 40,000 times 0 0.4 equals to 16,000 is what 40% takes from our buying power. So investment equals to 40% equals to what was that sixteen thousand dollars there you go all right so we want to follow the one percent rule right one percent rule equals to two thousand which is our bankroll times zero point zero one which is one percent and this equals to I know it's like, uh, <laughs> I know that it is uh, $20, but I just want to calculate it for you so we have a visual basis of what I'm doing. Times 0 
0.01, which is 1%. So this is 20,000. So this is amount that we are risking in every trade, $20. So now, since our investment per trade is $16,000 and we are risking in every trade uh, $20 from our bankroll, which is 1%, we need to find what percentage is $20 taking from the amount that we invest in every trade. There you go. Now I'm going to need a calculator for sure. <laughs> 20 divided by 16,000. This equals to 0 0.00125. 0 0.00125. Now let's convert this into percentage, multiplying by 100. There you go. So our stop loss tolerance equals to 0.125%, which is like approximately 0.13%. Let's say that way. All right, let's keep it the way it is. 125, 0 0.125%. So this is where our stop loss order should go. All right, so we have two cases now, right? There you go. The first case where we have $5,000 bankroll, 1 to 100 leverage, the buying power over here, $500,000, the investment of 25% equal to $125,000 per single trade. So we have a the 1% risk takes us to the $50 amount we can risk per trade, which brings a stop loss order at 0.04%. And then we have the second case where we have a bank of $2,000, leverage of one, point, uh, of 1 to 20, which gives us a $40,000 buying power, smaller buying power, but we're doing a bigger investment per trade, uh, which is like $16,000, 40%. The 1% rule brings us to $20 maximum risk per trade, right? And this equals to 0 0.125 stop loss distance from our entry point. Now let's go to, to a chart. This is the euro dollar. Let's go to a small euro dollar chart. All right, good. All right, let's say, let's say that, what's that? That's a bullish trend, right? There you go. It's a little bit exponential, which is a good thing, meaning that the trend is increasing and might go even higher. Let's say this is a turning point and we want to enter the market here. At 1.2240. There you go. Where should our stop loss go? According to the first strategy, I mean the first like parameters that we're using, the stop loss order needs to go at 0.04% of our uh of our entry point. 0.04%. So our entry point is at 1.2240. So zero. Point if we're buying the stop loss order needs to go 0.04 percent below the entry point. So what we need to do first is to take uh, the 0.04 percent to multiply them uh, by 100. Oh, oops, sorry, <laughs> that that that's my mistake. So we take the 0.04. Uh, 0 0.04 percent, 0 0.04 percent. Uh, we divide them by 100 in order to to convert them in a number, which brings 0 0.0004. Then we take one and we uh, subtract 0 0.0004 from that number, and we need to multiply our entry point by this number in order to see where our stop loss order will go. Uh, if if you don't understand something, feel free to ask a question. I would love to respond because I see that. Uh, these are a lot of numbers and maybe someone will not understand in this case. So we need to multiply our entry point of 1.2240 by this number. 1.2240 by this number. So our stop loss order needs to go at 1.2235 approximately. 35, here it is. Stop loss number one. I'm gonna put that stop loss order in red color. I'm even gonna I'm gonna switch to a smaller chart so it will look like we'll have a better visual basis. Here it is. Uh, color. Let's do red. There you go. This is our first stop loss order. Now let's do the second stop loss order, right? Uh, the second strategy that I just wrote on my doc file. It suggests a stop loss order on 0.125 percent from the entry point. All right, so 
0.125% divided by 100 to get the number. And we're getting 0 0.00125. I'm copying this so I will not forget it. I take one and I subtract that number from one and I get 0 0.99875, right? And now I multiply this by the entry point of our imaginary trade times 100 to 240. Here it is. In our second case, the stop loss order needs to go at 1.2225 approximately. 1.2225. Oh, I put it at the exact place. There you go. So this is according to the first parameters, the first type of strategy we're using. This is where our stop loss order needs to be. The second parameter suggests that our stop loss order needs to be here. The thing is that the different our bankroll and uh, the leverage we take uh, take the different the stop loss uh order place will take and why is the stop loss order lower right we're using like a smaller bankroll why is the stop loss order looser meaning that we're taking more a little bit more risk compared to our strategy the reason for this is that we're losing five times smaller leverage because here we're losing leverage we're using leverage of one to 100 and in the other example we're using a leverage of only one to 20 there you go this is why the second case suggests that our stop loss order could be looser because we're gonna if the stop loss order gets hit we're gonna lose only 20 bucks if this stop loss order gets hit however if we're using this approach if this stop loss order gets hit we're gonna lose 50 bucks and that's the difference and now let's get back to our slides all right so we did some math do you guys have any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I would love to respond to you. All right. I see no questions for now. So let's move on to some strategy rules. The thing is that defining your stop loss order is not everything of the money management approach. The other important thing is your strategy which is totally up to you. So the first thing that you need to do is to pick a strategy, then to modify it according to your trading type, your trading style, to test it many, many times to see that it is working. And when it, you see that it is working, you need to find what exactly is working for you. And at the end, you will need to extract the win-loss ratio of your strategy, meaning uh, how high are you aiming actually with that stop? Meaning, uh, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this. Win-loss ratio means uh, uh, where is your take profit compared to your stop loss order? Meaning that uh, if you're putting a stop loss order on a 10 pips distance and a take profit order on 20 pips distance, you have a win-loss ratio of two, uh, two to one. I hope you understand this. And the second thing is what is the success rate of your strategy? In other words, how many times your strategy is actually hitting your take profit order and how many times it is hitting your stop loss order. And then the, the amount of, of take profits compared to stop loss order is giving you the success rate. So for example, you have 100 trades and in 70 trades, uh, your take profit order is being hit. And in 30 trades, your stop loss order is being hit. This gives you a 70% success rate because 70 trades out of 100 are successful. Success rate, 70%. However, we should not forget some forex strategy rules. Remember these four things because they're very important. The tighter you hold your stop loss order, the higher the loss factor is going to be. Meaning that the more losing trades you're going to get. Because the tire, the stop loss order, the chance that the price hits it is bigger, right? So more losing trades with the tire stop loss order. The looser the stop loss order is contrary to this gives you a lower loss factor, meaning that the, the loss rate is going to be lower if you have tire stop loss order. However, whenever the price hits that, that lose stop loss order, you're going to lose a lot of money. So that's the thing. It's the same with the take profit. The tire, the take profit, the higher your success factor is going to be the win factor of your trade. The success rate is going to be higher, right? 
because if, if, if your target is only one pip, you're going to reach that target like a lot of times, many, many, many times. However, once the price hits the stop loss order, you might be a, a big loser at the end. And then the loser, the take profit order, then the lower your success rate is going to be because the bigger your target it is, the less likely it is that you're going to reach that target. And it is up to you and your trading strategy to test and to find the balance between this stuff. Whenever you find a trading strategy that works for you, you will need to do a lot of testing and to extract the win-loss ratio and the success rate of your strategy. Now, let's do an example. All right. Let's say that you found a winning strategy. Your win-loss ratio is 2 to 1. Your success rate is 60%. You have a bankroll of five thousand dollars and you're using a leverage of one to one hundred notice that i'm using like the previous example then you're going to have a buying power of five hundred thousand dollars and you're using the same investment approach 25 percent of your buying power of five hundred thousand american dollars which equals to one hundred twenty five thousand dollars all right now let's calculate what's going to happen from 100 trades with these parameters first we're using the 1% rule. This means that a losing trade, a losing trade is going to lead to a loss of $50, right? We already calculated this. 1% from $5,000 is $50. At the same time, since the win-loss ratio of our strategy is 2 to 1, this means that uh, if our stop loss order is at a $50 distance, then our take profit order is going to be at $100 distance. And this means that a winning trade is going to win $100 because this is 2 times 50, 2 to 1 win-loss ratio. So a winner brings $100, a loser brings $50. Our strategy has 60% success rate, right? These are the rules that we, we stated. These are just like imaginary stuff. It's not necessary that you find that exact strategy. And uh, furthermore, this is a little bit brave to say that exact strategy you know so 60 percent success rate means that you're going to have from 100 trades you're going to have 60 winners and 40 losers right 60 winning trades and 40 losing trades because 60 percent success rate from 100 trades mean, means 60 winning trades and then the rest is 40 losers so since one winner brings us 100 dollars profit this means that 60 winners equals to six thousand dollars gross profit from our strategy 40 losers times $50 loss, because this is the maximum risk we're taking, equals to $2,000 gross loss, right? And then the net profit from 100 trades from our strategy equals to $60,000 minus $60,000 gross profit minus $2,000 gross loss equals to $4,000 gross profit, uh, actually net profit from this exact strategy. So that's the thing. This is how it is actually working, right? If you want, we can simply do this calculation with the example that I just thought about. There you go. So let's compare. So the 1% rule here equals, all right, let, let's use a, like a new sheet. The 1% rule equals to $20 uh, loss that we're maximum taking from a tr trade, right? So if we're using two to one win, actually, we're not using if our strategy is two to one win loss uh, ratio, this means that winner equals to $40 and the loser equals to $20, right? Now let's do the 60% success rate, where from 100 trades, we're gonna have 60%, uh, there you go. Success rate gives you 60 winners times $40, and gives you 40 losers times $20, right? There you go. So now let's calculate this. 
All right. Uh, this is all right. I'm gonna do it manually, so you you'll be able to see it, guys. So this is 60 winners times forty dollars. This equals to two thousand five four hundred dollars, right? There you go. This is gross profit. I'm gonna write gr. All right, gross gross profit. And 40 losers times 20 equals to 800. 40 loser, losing trades time, times 20 equals to 800 gross loss. $800 gross loss. Net profit equals to your gross profit minus your gross loss, which gives us What's that? One thousand six hundred dollars minus eight hundred. All right, there you go. So this is your net profit. One thousand six hundred dollars. This is how it works. The whole calculation. It's not very hard. It could be a little bit complicated to do this. However, it is very very useful to know this stuff. Uh, all right, now let's get back to our slides because we will need to summarize one very important thing after all we're talking about money management and we barely use these two words money management in our webinar the thing is that everything that we just discussed is what money management is trading strategy plus bankroll management plus risk management is giving you the term money management that's the thing, exactly. This is what money management means. But I will understand, guys, if you consider that calculating all of this could be very time consuming and hard. You are totally right about that. And I will not require you to do this because most of this stuff are gonna be like computed by your trading platform, but you definitely need to know what is behind this calculation. And furthermore, the next thing that we're going to continue is related to a very special tool that our website forexbolt.com offers and this is our special forex bolt calculator so let's go to our website forexbolt.com here it is notice that i'm currently logged in and i go to tools forex calculator the thing is that we built a special calculator which is going to do all of this for you guys. That's the thing. It's going to do all of this stuff for you automatically. And now I'm gonna show you how to use this and we're going to compare some different trading strategies. Notice that below the calculator, there is a video that explains how to use it. Here it is. So on and so forth, showing you where to add parameters and stuff. And it computes some stuff for you. So now I'm going to show you how to use this tool because it is it is like very useful for you. It, it is very useful to to compare different strategies uh, with different money management approaches. So you will see actually where you're breaking even and where is the right balance for you guys. So the first thing the calculator asks you is to enter your bankroll. Say we have a bankroll. All right, I'm going to use the same parameters that we use. So I'm going to show you that this actually works. Let's use $5,000. Then you need to enter the leverage you're using. We said one to 100, right? Investment in a single trade in percentage, 25%. There you go, as we already did. Strategy success rate, we said, uh, actually first risk. What is the amount you're risking? 1% of your bankroll, there you go, one. Strategy success rate. Notice that stuff start happening on this calculator already. Strategy success rate, we said 60% success rate. And target based on your win loss ratio. One, two, uh, actually, target based on risk, which is loss to win ratio. Notice that it is upside down here because we need to calculate the win. So, loss to win equals to one to how much? One to two. Because win loss ratio equals to two to one, loss to win ratio equals to one to two. Switched. The win is two and the loss is one again. All right, type of trade, click to choose. You click here and you see like a, a, an arrow for a drop down menu, a buy 
order or sell order let's say we're buying there you go where is your entry level the price you enter at let's use the same price we enter as in our case huh. notice that by the way if we have bought over here this was going to be a losing trade and our stop loss order number one was going to be hit so this is kind of a breakout all right so our entry point was at 1.2240 right all right let's use that 1.2240 1.2240 with the euro dollar and now spread in pips this is the one thing that this calculator has because like every trade they take like spread from you in pips right so you need to know what is the spread of your broker and then add it to this calculator because currently in our calculations we weren't doing this because uh, very often when we're doing these calculations the spread is being neglected because it's a small part and in smaller trades is being neglected but it is always very good to know how to calculate spread as well this calculator is doing this for you so let's say your spread is 1.2 uh, pips for the euro dollar all right there you go and now everything is displayed at your calculator let's start with this window over here further trade information total buying power five hundred thousand dollars as we said single investment buying power because we're investing 25 percent of our buying power one hundred twenty five thousand dollars total risk from bankroll fifty dollars because we're using the one percent rule strategy failure rate which is like the the opposite of the strategy success rate strategy success rate 60 percent which means strategy failure rate 40 percent your levels your stop loss order should be placed at 1.2235 is that correct there you go 1.2235 there it is 1.2235 uh your take profit order should be placed at 1.2251 which is the stop multiplied by two the stop loss distance multiplied by two applied upward starting from the entry point your stop loss distance is 0.04%, which is the maximum risk you're taking. The pips stop loss distance is 4.9 pips distance, which is approximately five pips away from the entry point. Your loss from a losing trade equals to $50, which we already said. This is uh, probably, uh, I mean, this is like pretty much the same thing as the total risk from bankroll, a loss from a losing trade, same thing. And your take profit distance needs to be at 10.99 pips, which is pretty much 11 pips. So this is how you are complying to all these rules. Now let's see what is here in the bottom. So your gross profit from 100 trades is going to be $6,000, as we said in our presentation. Your net, your gross loss is going to be like $2,000, and your net profit is going to equal to four thousand dollars the difference between two and this is the projections from 100 200 300 and 400 trades there you go the graph and the projection right over here so after 100 trades your bank row is going to jump from five thousand dollars to nine thousand dollars in total of 200 trades your bank row is going to jump to sixteen thousand two hundred dollars 300 trades uh, means twenty nine thousand one hundred sixty dollars and 400 trades uh will bring you uh with this strategy fifty two thousand four hundred eighty eight dollars notice that these are just fictive numbers this this is not like i'm not referring to any strategy at all these are just numbers that i just made up so now let's try something something more real let's see if we have two thousand dollars bankroll if we use the leverage of one to to fifty what's gonna happen we invest in a single trade again 25 percent we're risking one percent the strategy success rate this time we're going to have like 50 percent success rate meaning that we're going to have 50 losers and 50 winners for 100 trade and our win loss ratio is going to be at um one point 25 meaning that if we are uh, like putting our stop loss order on 10 pips distance our take profit order is going to be at uh, at 12.5 uh, pips distance we're doing a long trade again and we're entering at 1.2240 same as with the euro dollar the spread we're going to leave the same there you go total buying power one hundred thousand dollars single investment buying power twenty five thousand dollars total risk from a bankroll from the bankroll twenty dollars 
strategy failure rate 50 percent of course because 50 percent success rate and 50 percent failure rate your stop loss order should be placed at uh what is that 1.2230 so we entered at 1.2240 so the stop loss order needs to be 10 pips below and the take profit order needs to go at 1.2253 which is 13 pips below almost 13 pips 12 point uh, whatever depending on uh, our entry point our stop loss distance is at 0.08%. Uh, in pips, this equals to 9.79 pips. Loss from a losing trade equals to $20. And the take profit pips distance equals to 13.44 pips. So your gross profit from 100 trades is going to equal to $1,250. Your gross loss will equal to $1,000. And your net profit is going to be like, uh 250 dollars from 100 trades and this is your account projection from 100 200 300 and 400 trades there you go oops the projection is after 100 trades is going to be 2225 uh 200 2250 dollars after 200 trades uh 2531 300 trades 2848 and 400 trades 3204 so this is like a more realistic thing. Let's see what happens if we double the leverage, right? Notice that I'm simply changing 50 to 100 over here. What's happening? So the first thing that we see is that our stop loss order becomes tired. It's like only 4.9 pips distance. This means that it is very likely that this stop is being hit very often. Uh, take profit distance is also very tight. So that might not be like a very possible strategy because spread and volatility will kill you on like a dynamic pair like the euro dollar eventually. But again, uh, notice that with the same leverage to comply to the same rules, nothing changed in our account projection. And the reason for this is that uh, the 1% risk rule uh, is complying to the leverage that we're taking. So even that we're taking like higher leverage, this strategy is going to act absolutely the same way because our one percent rule is protecting us so that's the thing with this calculator what do we need to change in order to profit more let's get back to to, to the previous level one to fifty there you go notice that if i change the leverage on one to one it reflects the targets you know to satisfy the strategy to satisfy that strategy one to one point twenty five Notice the take profit distance is 613 pips away. So this, this cannot happen. You know, this is like very hard to be achieved. So let's stick to a small leverage of 1 to 20. There you go. Uh, did I use one? Oh, no, 1 to 50 was our leverage. There you go. The thing that we need to do in order to improve our wins is in eventually to adapt our strategy uh, to our trading style so we will be able either to get higher success rate or to be able to aim for higher targets let's see what's going to happen if we change our take profit distance from 1.25 compared to the risk we're taking to 1.5 well there you go that's a different thing right so the net profit from 100 trades is not 250 it's 500 already and now let's see what's going to happen if we have like only 5% better success rate, 55%. There you go. This means five more losing trades versus the losers. There you go. It jumps to 750 from 100 trades, the net profit. Right? This is how it works. So you need to have a nice strategy <laughs> and well-managed rules to, like, to, uh, to conduct proper money management techniques for Forex trading. So basically, guys, this is what I wanted to introduce you uh, in this uh, webinar. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Now is the right time to ask your questions regarding the webinar we conducted, as well as that tool that I presented to you, the Forex calculator. Uh, all right, let's check for some questions. Oh, I see a question for Ratapon Gurtsuk. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name the right way. He's asking how many lots should I trade? This strongly depends uh, on the amount that you are willing to invest in a single in a single trade. 
and also the currency. So as you uh, as you probably know, a lot equals to uh, 100,000 units. Uh, a mini lot was 10,000 units, and a micro lot, I think it was 1,000 units. And then we have the nano lot with 100 units, which is like you know. So when we're talking about a single investment of uh, of uh, 100 and $25,000, this equals to 1.25 lots. This is how it works with the lots. So you need to you need to adapt this uh, to the Forex pair, the specific Forex pair you're trading. All right, guys, feel free to ask more questions related to the webinar. If you have any other questions, I would love to answer them. In the meantime, I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be uploaded tomorrow at our website at www dot forexball.com slash webinars for all the people that are under the trader membership and will be able to watch that replay at the same time also i would like to remind you that tomorrow i'm running a live analysis session uh in eight o'clock in the morning new york time it's going to be conducted in our private trading group and we're going to analyze some uh forex pairs in real time by your request guys all right, let's see if you guys have any other questions. I'm here for you to answer questions. <laughs> I assume that this might be a confusing matter. Although it is like uh, not very advanced, a lot of people don't, don't understand this uh, like uh, completely. And also I wanted to meet you guys with, uh, with the Forex calculator we're having because I see that not many people are using it probably because you don't know how to use it <laughs> eventually. But this is a very convenient tool, in, and in my opinion, it is a very, very nice tool when related when talking about building your strategy and event, eventually uh, like testing different numbers, like the success rate and the win loss ratio and the risk you're taking. So higher risk means looser stop loss order. This will give you a looser stop loss order will give you eventually a higher success rate for your trading strategy. However, will reduce your win loss ratio so this is a tricky thing you need to find the balance between this stuff all right guys let me now turn on my camera and in the meantime maybe somebody's gonna ask me a question all right that is me getting back to you again all right for our webinar Woo. <laughs> all right that was one hour of talking wasn't it all right all right, we see a question from Dennis Pleticha, how to get the calculator. This is at the website, Dennis. So you simply first go to forexbolt.com. There you go. The website is loading. You go to tools, forex calculator. Here it is, right over here. You click and you're getting the calculator. Notice that uh, notice that the calculator, because this calculator is like a very very complicated Excel spreadsheet attached into the into the website, so it is not very responsive. Probably you will not be able to use it uh, uh, to use it from a mobile device. And the thing is that when you scroll inside the window of the calculator, it goes down without actually scrolling the page because you're actually scrolling scrolling the Excel spreadsheet. So make sure when you're scrolling to scroll outside the tool in order to see the video, how this calculator is working. So the other things that you need to do is to fill in these boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes. That's it. And everything else is going to be conducted by the calculator itself. So this is how this calculator works. All right. All right, that's me again. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, since you don't have any more questions, because I don't see any other questions, or maybe I should wait like for a minute more. Maybe somebody will remember something about the webinar. All right. Currently at my location is uh, 6 p.m. in the evening, the best time for a webinar. So I assume, guys, eventually. Uh, that this is a good time for you as well also the next webinar by the way is going to be on forex channels and it's going to be conducted on uh on january 26th 
which is next Friday, not this Friday tomorrow, but the next one in eight days. You're going to see our next webinar, which is going to be on Forex channels and it's going to be conducted by Victor Nelson. All right, guys, this is everything from me. Oh, all right. We have another question from Dennis Pleticha. He's asking, is there a Kelly criterion calculator option feature? Uh, no, Dennis, for now we don't have this calculator, but we're thinking with the team eventually to integrate some more tools. So maybe in future you, you are going to see this calculator attached to our website. But we are constantly working on new features, new courses, new webinars, new life analysis sessions, new tools at the website and many, many other stuff in order to, uh, to keep you guys warm and to uh to make sure that you're having like a wonderful experience with the forex ball trading academy so if you have uh, any questions related to anything with forex trading or maybe you simply want to share something awesome with us feel free to go to our private trading group uh which is hosted on facebook uh our forex ball private trading group and share your trading experience over there we would love to discuss it with you all right guys Thank you very much for uh, your time, for attending this webinar. This was Damien from ForexBolt.com, and I'm looking forward to see you tomorrow at my live analysis session in our private trading room. Thank you very much for attending, and I am wishing you a great day. Bye-bye.